All right, so I've been extremely fortunate enough to fly this right here, the new DJI Inspire 3 for the past couple weeks now. And this definitely is not a full review video of this drone, mainly because there's so many features of this drone and it's so advanced that I think just to do its due diligence, you really need to fly this thing probably for a month or two, putting it through a lot of real world scenarios to see all of its capabilities. Now for me, the Inspire 3 is such a massive jump because I never flew the Inspire 2. The Inspire that I was flying when it first came out was this one here, which is the Inspire 1 back in 2015. When this thing came out, I was flying this thing all the time. Now I'm here in California, in San Diego, and it's normally, well, people would assume it's always sunny, but for the past two months, the May gray, the June gloom has been in full effect. So every time I've taken this drone out there, it's either drizzling, it's either super cloudy, everything just looks gray. So the quality I'm getting out of here, of course, is really, really good, but it's just not showing the actual potential of the camera. So I'm gonna have to take it out a lot more times once the sun starts coming back out. So this video, I just wanna go through with you guys my first impressions after flying this for the past couple of weeks. Like I said, I'm gonna definitely need more time when it's sunny outside, but there's a ton of features on this drone that I really like, and it's such a big difference between the old Inspire, even a big difference compared to something like the Mavic 3 Pro. Now, of course, the first thing we'll talk about is the new camera. This is the X9 camera, which can shoot 8K in cinema, DNG, as well as Apple ProRes RAW. And one setting I do like on the new camera is the S and Q, which is normally I would use on something like my Sony, which is the slow and quick. You can actually shoot 4K 120 frames a second in ProRes RAW as well. The X9 camera has dual native ISO at 800 and 4000. And for those shooting in low light conditions, this has 14 stops of dynamic range. When it comes to mounting the lens, I do like the fact that they added a little locking mechanism here on the side. So you actually have to swivel this to loosen it up. Once you do that, then you can actually pull and twist the lens off. Kind of gives you that little added safety feature there. So you do have the DL mount. So if you do have the existing or some of the existing lenses on their previous cameras, some of these do work. And of course, I'll leave those linked down below to see which older lens would be compatible with the new X9 camera. Now, hand over the top, we do have an FPV camera, which is new for me because of the fact, like I said, I came from the Inspire 1. The Inspire 1 did have dual op, but it wasn't the same. You didn't have that secondary camera. It is definitely a different experience having dual operators, one controlling it with an actual FPV drone. I've used dual ops before, but we were both looking at the same camera. Uh, when I was piloting, I was actually piloting the drone by visual line of sight and then I'd have the operator then move the camera. But here, you're not able to actually use the FPV camera here at the very top to monitor as far as the pilot goes. So I'm gonna come up, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna go to the left, and then you can, I'm gonna fly to the left, and you can kind of just keep going back to the right. Okay. Slowly there. And then the drone operator can just focus on controlling the camera movements at all times. What's really nice is that when I was piloting the drone and I was flying off of the FPV camera, you still have that O3 or OcuSync 3 transmission. And with that O3 technology, you are able to get up to 15 kilometers in range from your remote control to your drone. The one thing I really like about this camera and gimbal setup is that especially here when the landing gear, if you're flying it and the landing gear is down like it is right now, you can actually tilt the camera up about 80 degrees, so almost straight up in the air. It doesn't only go down 90 degrees like you would be, normally do on something like a Mavic or something like the Mini. It actually extends a little bit more. So going from about 80 degrees up all the way down, extending past 90 degrees down, it actually brings it back a little bit more. So you almost have about 170, 100, almost 180 degrees. And along with that tilt function, if you wanted to turn the camera around, you can actually go all the way around 360 degrees, but not just that. If you do hit the limiter, you're able to turn on a switch on the app so that if you do hit the very end of that turn, instead of the drone or the camera turning all the way, which it actually stops, it will then just continue spinning the drone around so you can continue your shots. Now moving on from the camera to the rest of the drone, here we have new foldable propellers, something that we haven't had before. These were the original, these are the Inspire One propellers. And as you can see here, the new ones are a lot taller, but not just that, you can actually fold these up. So very similar to what you would get on some of the other drones out there, the smaller ones. We now have that ability to fold these up, makes transporting it a lot easier, especially when you throw it in the back of a car, just fold these up. As I move the drone around, you can see we have cameras now all the way around. So we do have omnidirectional obstacle sensing. We do have sensors here at the very top. We now have 
cameras and sensing here on all of the landing gear. So you have cameras right there all the way around here. And of course we have some on the very bottom right here. The one thing I do like on the obstacle avoidance on the Inspire 3 is that you can actually adjust the sensitivity of the obstacle avoidance. So if you wanted to be a little bit closer to subjects and not have it beep right away, you can actually adjust that in the app. Now moving the drone around to the back on the very top here, this thing I really like, and that is the removable one terabyte SSD drive. It just makes transferring your files really easy because it is USB-C interface here at the very top. So you don't need to hook it up to like another reader. All you do is take it straight out of your drone, plug this into your laptop, and now the SSD will show up on your desktop as pretty much as a hard drive. So all you do is just dump your footage off and you're able to then pop this back in. Next thing we're talking about is the battery. And these batteries are really cool because they are hot swappable, which means you don't need to power your drone down when your batteries are low. So when I was out there flying, my battery would come in, it would actually beep and tell me I'm low on battery. But what was nice is that when you bring the drone back, you can keep everything on. So you can keep your camera on, your remote control on, you don't have to power anything down. All you do is take out one battery at a time, you can swap it out, put a new one back in, and then once you do that one, take the other one out, and then swap this battery with a fresh one, while at the same time, like I said, keeping the drone on, you don't have to shut everything down. Now when it comes down to battery life, they are rating it for approximately 27, 28 minutes of flight time. Of course, hover time is a bit less than that, but when I was out there flying, I would probably say I'm getting in the upper teens, lower 20s, as far as real flight time, I'm normally in something like sport mode and flying around. Now what's nice about the Inspire 3 kit is it does come with six batteries, but it also comes with this right here, which is a really, really well-built battery charging hub. And with this hub, you can actually fit up to eight batteries and you do have a few different settings the very back here, if you want to fast charge it, you can actually fast charge up to 90% in about 30 minutes. You can do a standard charge as well as a silent slower charge right there. So you do have a switch on the back as well as a USB-C out. So if you want to hook it up to your remote control, charge up your remote control, you're able to do that. Now, while the charging hub is built really, really nice, I was actually super impressed with how good the case that actually comes with this drone. The case itself is super slim. It comes with travel wheels. All of your gear will fit in it. Up to 10 batteries fits in the case. You can actually put two of these charging hubs in there and you can travel with your propellers on if you wanted to. I would always take them off because of foam. You have to have it like perfectly slotted. DJI made it so that you are able to just take this on the road right away. It does have a locking system on it as well as rollers. So if you want to just wheel it down the street, you're able to do that with the travel case or the case that comes with your Inspire 3. And finally, we have this right here, which is the RTK module. If those aren't familiar with RTK or real-time kinematic, once connected to the actual drone, it gives you a lot better accuracy up in the air as far as positioning goes. Now drones without using the RTK position-wise are about as accurate up to about one meter in distance or a couple meters in distance with something like an RTK system, you now decrease that size from a meter or two into centimeters. Now one of the main reasons why you might want to have just a lot better accuracy, especially when you're using something like drones, is you can unlock things like Waypoint as well as 3D Dolly. If you're out there setting waypoints for your drone, if you're doing something like construction and you want to be able to survey the land and the area and you want to be able to repeat that flight multiple, multiple times, you want that flight every time it goes up to be as accurate as possible. And that's one of the main reasons why you would hook up an RTK so that each time you put that drone up in the air, it'll be a lot more accurate as far as centimeter accuracy to that position versus it being a little bit off. Maybe it's off a meter, a two meters or so. With an RTK, it is a lot more accurate based on that initial waypoint setting. Also with the RTK, you can unlock things like 3D Dolly and that's something I still need to test out. But 3D Dolly basically is your waypoint setup that allows you to then put the drone, which is kind of like on a virtual cable or an invisible cable in the air. And you're able to now go on that cable line forward and back, turn the drone left and right, move the camera all around. And it's just basically kind of running on these virtual rails in the air. Now those are some of the main features of the drone that I really enjoy, but just little things that DJI has done, not even with the drone, but even with this RC Plus. This is the first time I'm flying with this remote control. And they really thought about keeping the pilot or the camera operator as comfortable as possible. They hooked up these 
brackets here to hook up to your shoulder harness. Thing swivels out, so you rest this kind of on your stomach to keep things nice and balanced. And then also when it comes down to customization of the buttons, you have a ton of customizable buttons here on the very front, and also a couple here on the back. You also have a removable battery for your remote control. And you just have a lot of different options here, HDMI out, USB-A, USB-C, micro SD. And also what was kind of cool is that if you are recording, so I was recording my screen record on the RC Plus, and what was nice, it was also recording my audio. So as I was speaking, uh, and when me and my other friend was piloting the drone, it was actually recording all of our uh, talk, our, our voice into the video. Um, and point down, yeah. that's that flat spot. So that's where people take off and land. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. It's basically just right there. Yeah. And there it is, guys. Just my first impressions of the Inspire 3. I've, like I said, I've only been had it for a few weeks, but I've only been really able to fly it a few times. Uh, because of the weather, but now that it is hopefully now getting sunnier in San Diego, I'll be able to get this thing out and do some of those other things that I've talked about in this video. All this stuff here I'm excited about, not just because I'm able to fly with the Inspire 3, but just kind of knowing that a lot of stuff will start slowly trickling down to these smaller drones, to the Mavics, to the, uh, the Minis or the Airs. A lot of this tech that we're getting now, ideally just over time, we'll start condensing and we'll start seeing them on just smaller, more compact drones. Thanks again for watching. This is Aldrin Stasio with FlyPath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.